also how the media actually either put more fuel in the fire or vice versa. Uh, what is your opinion on that? Start, stop, stop, stop. So my topic as was announced is that the whole state in media and society shaped me and I was relying on the design of the slides. They were pretty colorful. The thing is, you're not going to be able to follow me uh, on Twitter, so you can get the link to the slide. That's why you know, it's like a, an issue. Okay. So my first slide was uh, actually titled "Let Me Begin with the Story," and I kind of gave you the story of feeling sad because of the slides. But uh, I want to tell you the story of the sandwich that happened during my time in uh, in Vienna. I studied uh, on the uh, Department of Social Studies of Science where we try to see the intermingle of a society, science and technology. The thing is, uh, on this particular day, me and a colleague of mine went up to the roof to have a cigarette together, right? I used to, I used to smoke like a chimney back in the days. So uh, I gave him a cigarette and about two or three hours later when we had another class break, we go again to the chimney and he, forgot, he didn't have apparently uh, pretty much of time to go and buy his packs of cigarettes, right? So I gave him, I lent him another one, and he says, this time, he kind of decided to repay me, right? He wanted to give me something back because, like, for, for us Albanians, it feels like an honor to give someone, you know, to, to kind of poison someone with a secret. I don't know why is that, but, you know, I gave him without a return, without expecting something in return. And he said, man, I have a sandwich for you, right? I want, I want to use this story to kind of get to the topic because I think it's important to, you know, uh, kind of offer also the counter narrative of how are we being served especially from the media point of view on, on this uh, hot topic, on this appealing topic on, on a global uh, scale. So it says, I have a sandwich for you, right? I, and it, I couldn't be more happier that day because I didn't eat all day long. But the thing is, you know, that, that kind of hit me, I was like, uh, well, what is the sandwich there? You know, because as, as I'm practicing Muslim, we are forbidden from eating pork. I think most of you probably know that already. And uh, I, I wanted to point out this one because I couldn't expect it otherwise, right? I said, is it with cheese or is it with, with uh, salami? He says, uh, I'm suspicious, but I think it's with salami. And I think you don't eat that one, right? I said, yes, I confirm. He goes on to say, because you are a good luck for the world, he said, you are an extremist. <laughs> and it hit me, right? I, I'm like, yes, man. I think if I was an extremist, I would go kaboom right now and you'd be flying up high while I sing Michael Bublé's, you know, New Day, birds flying high and that song, right? So we would blast it into laughter and everything. But the, the, the point that I wanted to get from there is his per perception on what an extremist is, right? So this is the, the context that usually we are being uh, used to here on, on the media. Now, my, my, the point of, that I, why I have narrowed it down this context in Kosovo particularly is because I got uh, a paper of mine, a research paper on, on uh, during my studies in Vienna, got turned down because the dean there told me I have to narrow down the topic, right? And at that point I didn't really understand what does it mean in science when you have to narrow down a topic. But I think that this discussion that we're having actually can easily be applied on the, on the global scale in most of the countries, especially on those that are uh, developing countries, you know, in particular where they lack kind of a, a, a established economical uh, development and, and, and whatnot. But I want to point out the differences of speech on the first point, which is the S. And it, it, it wasn't by accident that I named the slide State Media and Society, which kind of a result pronounces to SMS, right? Which is easily to be remembered, probably. But uh, a famous speech that made President, US President Barack Obama a couple of earlier days, I think, was that uh, the terrorists do not speak for a billion of Muslims, referring to the ISIS uh, phenomenon. They that reject their ideology. They no more represent Islam than any madman who kills innocent in the name of God represents Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism or Hinduism, right? No religion is responsible for terrorism. People are responsible for violence and terrorism. If you take this, this context and this kind of approach now, which is quite uh, astonishing to my point of view, and try to see how it is uh, tackled within Kosovo politics, you'd be fascinated, which kind of reveals the uh, immaturity, what I call, and the carelessness of language from the main political uh, uh, leaders in Kosovo. One of them, unfortunately, is uh, 
on an interview during 2013, if I'm not mistaken, is the head of the state, President Yahyaga, which makes a claim regarding a headscarf, regarding hijab, what we call it in the religion of Islam, right? And she says, this will not be allowed because the Republic of Kosovo is a like state. And I would really, I'm interested in your topic up next. And she goes on to say, wearing the headscarf will not be permitted. It's a done deal. So it kind of closes all discussions that can actually be happening on this, on this regard. And, and uh, uh, the, point, the, 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 the point that I want to raise from here is, why would the head of the state, in first hand, try to marginalize a certain community and a certain, it, it, their own people of a certain appeal, of a certain appearance? My next point is, uh, one of the other leaders, I will try to speed up because now I, have, I don't have the, the sense of time, you know, to be honest, since Let's I'm like... Let's take to 20 minutes. Okay, okay. thank you. So, Ramu Haradina is another political leader here, and he makes a speech on 2013, again, which was, you know, ISIS was not at the very tip of the, their point at those days. You know, it kind of was raising probably the, uh, the, on the scale. But he makes a point, because he lost most of his electorate, and actually lost two of the main uh, municipalities that he, his party used to govern. He says, I respect religious beliefs, I respect Islam in Kosovo, as it was pre-war before 98, but I do not respect not, not this line, right? Some scumbags, some scumbags with fears. He repeats it twice, right? But think that in this country we can become something else. And to, to, to his, unfortunately probably, I mean, you know, to his uh, uh, unlucky uh, saying, we did a quick research on how Islam was in Kosovo. I'm, I'm, I consider myself from the young generation. I haven't stepped on the 30s yet. So the point is we went to, to do a little research and what we found out, which you cannot actually, unfortunately, see now, is that the, the, the usually when the political uh, leaders in Kosovo tackle this topic of asking that we want here an Islam which is pre-war, pre-98, right? They refer in particular, and we, we are really uh, trying to do some research on this one where we can actually extract the data specific to this case. They refer to the Islam that used to be here during the times of the communist era because people were easily identified if you used to carry a beard in those days or if you used to carry a hat, so to wear a hazmat, right? And, and, and the, the, both of these two were banned. Actually, all re religions were banned during those days. And that's why the, the uh, political leaders in Kosovo, they kind of aim on this particular Islam, you know, because if you go back a little while in time, during the first and a half of the 20th century, what you will find, and the man here can probably see, is, is quite astonishing because most of the religious leaders, Islamic religious leaders we're talking about, because we are a major, majority here, they used to carry, you know, they were, I don't, I don't know their scumbag level, as Mr. Harazin has pointed point out, but they, they were had wearing beards, right? And then another picture right in prison, it's under the, the uh, castle there, which are women wearing burqa at those days. I haven't actually met this one, I'm, I'm uh, from the 80s generation. But it is quite astonishing, you know, if you find this, uh, this uh, 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 kind of clash of what they are looking for and what actually was here, you know, present in this day. And uh, there was also a head of the state which made a clear uh, point three or four weeks ago about some other scumbags. You know, the term scumbag is quite appealing to the, to the elite of, of politics in Kosovo. But my point is, is this, is this the right language from the state point of view to tackle uh, social phenomena, right? Because, as one of the analysts, Halid Matoshi, a prominent analyst in Kosovo, says, uh, if we approach this from the universal perspective that no one is guilty unless proven, proven otherwise, right? And, and in, in the meantime, it shows that the politics are actually sticking their hands to the court of justice. They are trying to influence what the judgment is going to be up front, right? They, they're making some uh, poor judgment. And the point is here, as, as Halid Matoshi carries on, what will the head of the parliament say if, in the meantime, the court actually releases these uh, people that were arrested, I don't know if you heard the news during the uh, lake of Badozzi, because apparently they were suspicious of trying to, to uh, poison the, the lake. It seems quite a little funny because, you know, the, the, the things that came out afterwards was that the uh, quantity of poison that you need to possess in order to, to infect the whole lake was quite a tiny minus, even if you were keeping it in their pockets. Anyway, the point is here, Will he make a public announcement? And this is not a very known thing in our country, unfortunately. You know, we don't know how to give a, you know, kind of resign from uh, political post. We just probably just move on and do nothing. So the thing is, 
if, if you try, if we would try, I would like to point a recommendation. Like my, my, my presentation was here to make, to be a little thought provoking, you know, and encourage us to kind of uh, look at each other from another perspective. I am, I am from prison originally. I may look like a Pakistani for some of you, right? But the thing is, it's not the, the, the appearance that actually uh, dictates who we are in, 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 in our own self, right, in principle. The thing is, why I'm saying this because most of the terrorist attacks, you know, like the famous 9/11 uh, and the, the, the recent famous uh, Charlie Hebdo, none of the uh, accused terrorists used to carry beers. You know, so this brings the table to a whole new level of this appearance that that what actually dictates who we, who we really are. So instead of the country of Kosovo, instead of focusing on you know reframing and, and labeling his own people, maybe it's the right thing to do and move from the organized crime that we are actually suffering right now. And it's the number one uh, issue, as reported by the European Commission and by the Department of State, to the uh, enforcement of the law and actually start uh, kind of you know pulling out their hands from what they have been right now, and then disempower from disempowering their own people to empower actually them because you know it, it is as as a youth of this country, it is not really uh, entertaining if you would live by the idea that maybe you might be uh, a little a little. I, I don't personally feel this one, but I'm just saying you know from the uh, general perception that you might be a little inferior to the youth of, of the other countries. You know, this doesn't give you the idea that you are in, in, a, in a challenge, in the spirit of, you know, uh, in, in a race, the, the good race I'm talking about, the race of science, the race of knowledge, the race of, I don't know, Olympics or whatnot. Another slide of mine is with a story, uh, I have three stories, I think I'm going to try to put this one in. So it's another story with a story of the kid in the elevator. I will use this one to kind of go to the M, right, to the next level. So we, we have uh, an office, I'm a software engineer by profession, you know, I, I write code, I write programs. And we have an office down there where we do web development in, in particular. So one of the days I was going to the office, actually getting out of my office, and the thing is, I meet, when the elevator door opens, I meet a, a, a woman with, his, uh, with her own kid. And when I step into the elevator, the kid goes and reaches to his mom's lap. It, it really, you know, it was, Interesting. I used to have a longer hair. I think it was a longer hair and the beard. Probably I fit the profile of what they used to be seeing on the, on the news, right? So the kid used to carry this plastic uh, AK-47 that you buy on, on the market, and he but he was still holding to his mom's legs, right? And when the door of the elevator opens, they get out. He turns to me and he does, you know, he kills me twice. Now it hit me, right? Why? Why is this actually taking place? Why is this occurring? And I remember, I tried to, re to recall from my uh, childhood, I realized that my generation, we have, you know, what I call the PlayStation generation probably, we have raised up with, with fictional superheroes like Superman and Batman, right, and Spider-Man. And actually up to this day, I really want to become a Superman if it's possible from, you know, <laughs> science discoveries up in the future. The thing is, this kid is being influenced for something different. He is not being influenced from Superman and Batman, he is being influenced from Media Man and Bin Laden, right? So these are the new, uh, the new context that is being served to the population. And he was at about, I think, the age of three or four, maybe. And I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. He was very, very little. The funny thing is, are, we, are the media now helping this one? And, and the next discovery that I did just last night was, was tremendous. You know, on one of the mediums, I, used, I, I was part of a debate in a TV, uh, local TV station here in Kosovo. It's in Plan Kosovo. I don't know if you know that one. But I wanted to point three different uh, news articles here in Kosovo. Now everything has turned into commercialism, right? We want to earn money. We want to click those clicks and get the, the ads, you know, revenue back there. And I understand that most of the media agencies here, they are focused on getting the revenue, of course. Like the Gazeta Express is one of, uh, I think, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a good engineer, so excuse me for the technical facts. But it's listed on one of the 1,500 uh, top websites in the world. Now, if, if you realize that it is serving content to a nation of about 10 million, it's quite fascinating, right? To be ranked at, up, at, at that uh, level. How did they reach that one? Well, they have a lot of mechanisms, what I call, you know, big commercialism, and, and kind of, I, I, I do penalize it at some, at some extent. But the thing is, you know, they did an, an article three or four weeks ago, which said, which was titled, uh, Islamic attack in France, one death. Now, I, I'm also, uh, a military guy, like I served seven years in the military. I used to carry the rank of the second of a lieutenant. We have heard of attacks, and 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 and, and uh, we have heard of many other formations. You know, like 
hasty attacks, and you have to, you know, uh, when when you, when you set up a, a you, you set up a checkpoint for the enemy and everything. But we never actually read anywhere in the literature of what type of attack is an Islamic attack. And you, you feel the point what I'm trying to raise here. And the thing is, I mentioned in this debate, in this very article, I pointed out, I didn't mention the name of the news agency. Now, what I realized last night, you know, it, it was that the article, actually, Google has still indexed the site as it used to be the title, the Islamic attack on France. It's in Albania, of course, Sul Islamic in France, near Deco. The thing is, they change, when you click the article link now, they change the title from Islamic attack to a terrorist attack. But what they forgot to change is what we call the permalinks, the slides, the slugs. You know, the one that Google actually indexes when you click on the link, the one that shows on the address bar of your browser, right? They forget to change that one. And this, this, is, this has occurred five days after the article got published, which is funny, you know. And another point that I want to raise here is, is the media actually kind of assisting, is they promoting, is there a, an interest of some, some uh, 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 elites or some probably people that are kind of appeal to causing disorder rather than helping the cause, rather than in joining everyone to fight a, a, a social phenomenon of which we are all suffering from. And now this maybe is, is the right time to point to the media uh, that they are, they may for, have forgotten their essential fundamentals, like the one, the fairness, the truthfulness, objectivity, impartiality, and public accountability, which I think totally they only to like these days. Now, now and, and another article to move forward from The Guardian, which points out to research, recent research from uh, Michael Jeter, a fellow institute uh, researcher at the Institute of Bonn in Germany, who analyzed 6,000 uh, attacks from the year 1970 up to 2012, as reported in the New York Times. What he actually sh shows is quite fascinating, right? He, he, he goes on to say, Michael Jeter, professor, terrorist organization receive extensive media attention, whether it is the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, or whatever, the ISIS recently. What this article is suggesting is that we may need to rethink the sensationalist coverage of terrorism and stop providing terrorists a free media platform. I think this is very important. And it is also covered by, by another friend of mine, Ervis Mertiri from Albania, who says uh, he calls them the pop jihadists, right? Because it, is, it has become a, a phenomenon that if you go to the screen and you're doing on the screen of people and you kind of try to terrify them, you're gonna, you're gonna get famous. I mean, I think it's much more easier to get famous with such an act these days rather than with something that is wise, that is knowledgeable, that is uh, whatever, pop, pop uh, orient, oriented, right? And another quote, I, I watched the movie Ted two, two weeks or three weeks ago, okay? A quote that actually caught my, my uh, attention at, at this movie is Morgan Freeman preaching to Ted and, and uh, Michael Walter. He says that what the, and I quote here, he says the president, but I kind of adapted it. What the media says would affect the public directly. Unfortunately, the public doesn't judge by reason, it judges by emotion. And now this is very important because I think what, what each of one of us that are trying to, you know, going into social science <laughs> is ask whether we are being aligned with the public that judges by emotions or with the ones who are trying to base our judgments on empirical data and, and research and studies, right? Or are we just being hasty in judgments and preframing one another? And this goes to another third story and the last one I have now. After I returned from Vienna, now you heard the story with the sandwich, right? I just came down to drink a coffee in Shadowland because I was, you know, homesick and everything, so I needed to visit the downtown. And right there, about 200 meters from here, there was a guy who, when he looked at me, and I was walking down the road, he just returned and said, get out, you Taliban, right? And I, and I stopped for a second because I thought to myself, man, this guy must be living under the rock. You know, the Taliban are out, ISIS is in this day, right? <laughs> So this is, I think this is another, another important thing to bring out, you know, and how, how are we, I, I, don't, I don't expect, honestly, that everyone is going to come up to these stances and uh, base their judgments on, on research and study. One of the, uh, I think, fantastic and phenomenal work that occurred here recently in April is uh, the report from uh, uh, KCSS, this is Kosovo Center for Research Studies. I don't know if you guys heard that one. Yeah. I think it's, it's an aston astonishing piece of work because it was the first one that actually brought the, the, the uh, terrorism and the Wahhabism and whatever ism debate, you know, that is kind of tries to be uh, Islamic related from the media perspective. And they brought it on the research side. You know, they, they did a seven month research, which was fantastic. And I would really urge all, all of you to kind of take a look at that one. It's also in English, fortunately. Now, 
what is this causing? Besides the kid on the elevator, you know, that kind of shaped a, 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 a profile of how his uh, negative superhero must look like. You know, this is not, not the, the debate of, of this sort is not, hasn't been brought to the surface only recently with the ISIS. The science, I think they do a lot of research also on the, in the violence in the, that is found in the games and in the movies and in all sorts of things. Because that little kid that killed me twice, I don't think he was also only, you know, ISIS uh, influence to do that, that gesture. The thing is, uh, Naif al Mutaw, which is a, uh, a American professor, psych psychology professor, lectures in the Kuwait University, he did a, a, a experiment with his own students in Kuwait. He gave them two uh, articles, one from the New York Times and one from the New York Magazine, right? And he took out the titles and in the magazines and everything. And there, there were two stories there. One about the group, which was called the Party of God, who wanted to ban Valentine's Day, they, they made red, you know, the color red illegal, and, and they, whenever they caught boys and girls flirting, they just would get married them up front, you know, instantaneously. And the second article talked about a woman complaining because three minivans with six bearded men came out of the vans and started interrogating them, you know, on site, of why she was walking with a man who wasn't related to her, right? The students, this is taking place in Kuwait, right? Because I think it's very, you know, interesting. And the students were asked, asked where they think that these uh, two occasions took place from, right? And on the first one, all of them, Professor Mutawa says, they were, they, there was no debate, it was Saudi Arabia, right? And the second one, they were debating whether it was Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan. Now, I would really like to, to ask, you know, some of the opinions, where would you think this sort of, uh, of uh, you know, stories took place? Well, it goes to the Middle East, right? The region, most of them, or probably to the conservative. Yes, please, sir. America. <laughs> Spot on, yeah, I think. That, yeah, indeed. The, the first one actually took place in India about the Hindu uh, group, and the second one was upstate New York with an Orthodox Jewish community. You know, now, this, is, this brings a very in interesting, you know, uh, perspective and worldview on how do we look at matters. Now, the thing is that those, those uh, Muslim students in Kuwait, they took themselves as being part of this phenomenon, right? And sometimes, honestly, as, as, as being a practicing Muslim myself, you, you get to this point where you kind of dot on your own choices, right? I mean, I, I was raised and born in a, in a Muslim family, in a, in a traditional Muslim family, but I made my choice of how do I look these days, right? And what, what ideology do I uh, adhere to? Now, the point is, are we imposing a little bit what too much on how are we uh, uh, how are we approaching one another this is on the on the uh, society part and i think what we need to do is actually stop the pre-framing right and start reframing one another and from stopping of stereotyping actually start reading and doing research and basing our own judgments on research right and the last and the, th th the third one i think stop hating up front without cause you know without without a you know, kind of covering a whole slew of, of community and start loving one another there is a very famous uh, 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 verse in the Quran, I would like to point this in Arabic, it's not like a secret weapon, so don't fret, right? <laughs> it says, Ya yuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unta, wa jalna kum shu'uban wa qaba ila li ta'arafu. This is a very important point in the last step, right? Ila li ta'arafu. What means li ta'arafu in Arabic? To get to know one another. What I think is happening actually by preframing one another is that we are killing all this potential of getting to, you know, to multiculturalism and sharing experiences and getting to know one another because it is in our innate nature, right? Of, 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 of what I have to tell you and what you're gonna have to tell me. I, I learned a lot in DNA, I learned a lot in America. Like, honestly, I went to America with a, with a, no, with a preconceived notion of some things. Like, they are all brainwashed and they relate a lot to the movies because I worked with Americans in the army, so I had some sort of experience. But when I was there and I returned back, I realized that, you know, prejudging people is actually the number one killer and or the cause of enmity each other right instead of helping us shape one another and actually you know enrich us with, with experience and with knowledge I, I, I'm in the end right okay the, lo the last point I wanted to point out yeah I'm sorry yeah the, the, the very last one can I have a trigger lots of debate already okay can I have only one one, one last one so I think this also I, I can back this up this stands that we really need to work with one another based on Ibn Khaldun, which was one of the books, Al Muqaddimah, that uh, the, the Facebook founder, Mark Zuckerberg, kind of made it uh, obligatory on his employees, employers, right, to, uh, to, to read it. And it's called, uh, it, 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 a term there is Asabiya, which means a social cohesion, you know, a, a sense of shared 
uh, principle, a sense of shared purpose and group consciousness that we need to share between one another. I, I'm really uh, kind of sad because the, the time is very limited, but my, my dear brothers and sisters and friends, the point I wanted, I wanted to raise here, and I really think that once we get out of this stage, I'm sorry for taking up your time on the stage. Thank you. So uh, uh, what we, when, we, when we leave this place, right, I think maybe it's the right time in order for us to change a social phenomenon. We, we, are, we all agree that discourses on, on uh, violence and violent extremism, none of us actually uh, feel appealed to, right? I, I don't think either one of us. Now, the, the point is we need to tackle the ideology, the, the cause, like the re report of the KSCC, KS, uh, KCSS uh, report, recommends that we need to tackle the, the, uh, the causes that lead to the extremist ideologies, not after they actually happen. Once someone blows themselves up, excuse me, you cannot do anything after that one, right? But this, it, the, the language, I think we need to be careful the, the, in the language. And, and as students of science, it is our main uh, obligatory purpose that we should be the last one in the list of people, in the list of, of, of public, that we may come up to the uh, hasty judgments and pre-framing and, and, and uh, classifying and labeling one another. Thank you very much. I hope I kind of, you know, tackle a little bit of interest probably on this topic. I would really like to carry on probably. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I have been a very peaceful message, and I'm not uh, prepared enough to react in your presentation. I just don't know how to thank you. Thank you but much. we do have social scientists here, and they might reflect on your, uh, the content that you uh, developed here. And then we will have debate. Uh, thank you for the technicalities. Um, we just take responsibility of not forgetting to uh, let you know that there is no PowerPoint possibility here. It was the only rule that you were provided because everything is overflowing.